Brian, you said uh, after the game that the group was determined. You, now that you've seen it at practice, where are the mindsets going into to Sunday against Kansas City? Determined still. I mean, look, today was a regen plus. Some guys that didn't play as much, guys coming back, internationals doing a little bit extra, but mostly a regen. But the mood is okay. Watched film, talked about some things, some good, some bad. And then, you know, on to Kansas City. How did Christian make it out of the game? Good, the very good. He's doing a little extra fitness now because he wants to get back in shape a little quicker. So good on him. We saw uh, something happen with there with Raul with Peru. Uh, do you have an update yeah. on, on Raul? <clears throat> we'll, I'll have a better update tomorrow. He's undergoing some tests. I think they're going to they're send him for an MRI and stuff like that. Looks like he might have a, either a kick on the outside of his ankle or an inside ankle sprain. We, again, I'll know more tomorrow. He's, but he, he's here, though. He's here. Yeah, he's here in Seattle. And he's going to get evaluated by our people. When you um, say that you'll know more tomorrow, does that is that also as far as likelihood of being able to play, or is he definitely not going to be able to play? Jada, that's a great question. Uh, I would say that it's more likely than not that he won't be able to play. But he understands the importance of the game. We'll take him on the trip, and if he can manage the pain, you know, if it's just an ankle sprain, they can sometimes wrap that up but we just want to rule out anything more serious. Without, you know, having any official word or, you know, any better sense of everything, the fact that he's walking on his own and things, does that just yeah. make you feel a little well, better? Yeah, he's in there, you know. He says, yeah, it's okay, it's not so okay, you know. <laughs> he's in a good mood, so that tells you something. Uh, and the other no, no nationals are okay? Is yeah, everybody else came back healthy. How did, Jor how did Jordan Camp and uh, look today? Good, good. They participated in everything. Jordan, again, was with the group that, you know, that trained a little more because we would have liked to seen him play that second game. But, you know, well, either that second game or play for us. But, you know, it's a different story. Uh, so he, he looks good. I mean, he's motivated. Was it frustrating at all not, not seeing him play on Tuesday considering what he could have been here? Well, that whole, look, the whole conversation about, you know, Raul coming, not coming back, all the internationals. Look, it's an international break. It's a FIFA window. It was a long shot. And look, specifically in Raul's case, I mean, that was that coach's first camp. He was not going to let one of his players go his first camp. He couldn't set that precedent. So we understand. Uh, th th there is, you know, possibilities with numbers and, and results where you know if, if you start off the game at a certain time results could you know determine a lot how do you keep guys from just worrying about any other results or uh, you know any other games that you tell are you them talking about decision day or are you talking about the no, minnesota about game and everything up. on saturday there's the one coming up there's there, there's a way that maybe you're eliminated or not so how do you yeah. just keep them away from that and well, just we focus can't on the game? we can't they're going to be watching the games. We're all going to be watching those games. So, yeah, we'll know a little bit ahead of time what our fate is. Hopefully it's good. But if it's not, it's, if it's not a good result, then we're still going to go out and try and beat Kansas City and end up with as many points as we can. That's what we're going to do. Within that, though, if the results don't go your way, is there a chance that you would play more younger players or do something? I'm going to play the out? team. I'm going to play the team, Jada, that I feel is going to help us win the game. Young or old? Young or old? After. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, Javier, uh, you said that you were going to have a discussion with him. Has there been any. Yeah. I spoke with Javi this morning. Um, look, I know there's a there's a brouhaha going with you know one side and the other. I mean, I I, I watched his thing on Fox News. I mean, I I, I get it. Um, what I would say to that is, you know, what I believe personally is that you know all players, sounder players, they have the right to say or feel however they want to feel. But so do I. And so what we try and do is just make them. Uh, understand that words matter that that you know what they say in their social media accounts matters to people people take what they say and they might feel one way or some people might choose to sensationalize that stuff and they might think a different way so we had a good discussion we're not in the business of telling Javi what to think 
He's his own man, but we do want to guide him and counsel him and try and help him when it comes to his social media account. And that's all we can do. And if I decide to go into that on a more personal level, then that's my choice to do with Javi. And any of those conversations, I would keep, I would keep private. Was there anything that he wanted the public to understand or know as far as the way he interpreted the, either the, the, the reasoning behind it? Is there anything that... No, I don't think there was anything there. I mean, look, again, he has a right to believe what he believes in. I guess and what I'm asking is, like, did he interpret it to be transphobic and it was this anti-gay statement, or is there something else that he you, was saying? Jada, I, I don't want to mischaracterize my conversation with Javi, and I'll probably keep that private, but no, I don't think he meant it in any sort of demeaning uh, way whatsoever. Uh, just to clarify, was he sent to re-education camp? <laughs> No. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> there's a reason why he's on Tucker Carlson. Let's be honest. I just feel like it would be worth clarifying. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's move past it. Yeah. I don't want to talk about him because he's going to like that we're talking about him. Right, I know. Get, getting back to soccer, <clears throat> yeah. uh, sporting Kansas City, six games unbeaten. Uh, you know, what are the challenges that they present? Well, again, they've kind of righted the ship a little bit because, look, they're out of the playoffs but they had a little resurgence there late so it'll be a tough squad peter is a demanding coach he'll make sure that his pride the pride of that organization the players individual pride is on the line against us i know they'd love to knock us out of the playoffs so it's the same team 433 it's got good players you know they just playing at a better better pace better clip than what they were doing you know a month ago it was a gutsy performance. It, was a, it wasn't the, the perfect game, but uh, the, the way that that kind of conducted itself, that draw, did that just that unify the group a little bit of how they were able to manage that? I maybe? think for the future, absolutely, Nico. What it did was just kind of remind everybody that, look, that group of players, our, our team, has a lot of personal pride. You saw all their emotions after the game. Guys were on their knees. They were exhausted mentally and physically with what they put into the game. And I, you know, thank them for that effort and thank them for their work the entire year. It really showed in that game. And that's always the message that, you know, we're never going to quit. We're always going to try and play to win. You know, we could have sat back and, you know, hope for a draw. I don't think there was any player on the field that was thinking about 1-1. They were, they were going for 2-1. And those are good qualities to have within your team. Is, at the same time, was there a sense that maybe that level of fight and determination has been absent, or has it just not been going your way? I think if you look back at the Galaxy game where we went down 2 nothing, came back 3-3, should have been 3-2. I think uh, there's been moments where we haven't played to our potential, but I don't know if I'd go so far as saying that that level of intensity or intent has found the group this year. You know, the, 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 the when I look back on the season, Jeremiah, you know, it's some of the games like you know, that early game against San Jose I keep bringing up. You know, we're at 3-1 and maybe, yeah, there we put on cruise control because we're thinking about CCL. Well, what if we had those three points? You know, those are the types of games that I think about, you know. That, w that one was frustrating. How much did CCL then factor in to, to where you're at right now? Back, well, we're not going to use excuses, Jackson. We're, we're way past that. What I learned from this experience from this year, what we've learned as a, as a coaching staff, is that the one thing I wish I would have done was a little bit earlier I talked about, you know, reducing the volume and increasing the intensity after what was an emotional high. And I think I should have started that a month earlier. You know, really getting them to really get back at it, but shorter doses, because they look tired, they look fatigued in some of those games because of the physical output, because of the Champions League. And so, 
that's what I'm going to take out of this year, regardless of whether we make the playoffs or not. It's 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 a learning curve for us. You mentioned the San, uh, San Jose game. Uh, others have mentioned the Orlando game. Is that kind of on that? Well, same Orlando level? was you know the effort in Orlando. That was more soccer mistakes. I think we're up two nothing. We got to be able to close that out, Jada. You know. That's a little bit different. I thought I thought we took our foot off the gas in that San Jose game. In the month of September, you've been wearing the, the gold tie uh, for the kick yeah. of cancer. What does that cause me to you? Personally? Well, Christine uh, does a great Zach Scott fan club. Is her Twitter handle? Christine uh, always does a great job of a very worthy cause. And her daughter, her experiences. She's a go-getter, and uh, she sends me reminder emails. And I appreciate it very much. She even bought me that tie. And it's been good to me. The tie's been good to me. It's been good luck. So it, does, it, is, it is personal because Christine and Zach, they, they, they do a good job. And Roger and all the guys that started that way back when. I mean, there's a lot of good people behind that. And the fact that a lot of your players do things with that stuff, yeah. drive with glassy babies and talent. Again, Rose shows some of the character of some of the players that we have on, on the team. Just what did you get to take your, to finish off with that? Your take on that goal, the Freddie Montero goal, not, not just the strike, Golasso. but not just the Golasso, but you know, uh, Kellen's ability to just take his space and yeah. find him. Yeah, it's a good goal. Just what we needed, ignited the team, ignited the fans. Classic Freddie. Yes. But uh, Nico, he looks like Nico. Ready. Nico will be playing. Yeah. Okay, thanks everybody, thanks Jada. Thank you.